right. Tonight, 80s pop icon Pete Burns' filler faux pas. If I so much as touched my face, there would be an audible hissing. It would go, and out onto the mirror would vomit this yellow fluid. How country queen Dolly Parton went from this to this. If I see something sagging, bagging and dragging, I'll go have it nipped, tucked and sucked. And actress Tina Malone's cosmetic catastrophe. Blood and gunge and God knows what else gushed out and I was taken to hospital. <laughs> From walking on red carpets to simply walking down the road, celebrities have nowhere to hide from the camera lens. And with so many eyes watching their every move, the need to look their best can sometimes land them on the operating table. But for some, the quest for perfection can become an obsession. I think we've seen with a lot of our celebrities that they can go too far. The whole perception of what looks good or normal can become very distorted. Uh, and we see this all too frequently. One celebrity who's lost count of how many times he's gone under the knife is 80s pop sensation Pete Burns. But after having permanent filler injected into his lips, he's been left more botched than beautiful. But how did this 80s pop icon transform into one of the world's most renowned cosmetic surgery stories? For the first time, he reveals the full extent of his cosmetic surgery, and we see just what's going on inside his infamous face. The number of surgeries that I've had would probably be 300. I hope when I'm 80 that I get to heaven and God doesn't recognise me. In 1985, the Dead or Alive singer released a song that would change his life forever. But with an underlying obsession for perfection, it wasn't just his life that was about to change, his face was too. When me Ram was going up the charts, I realised I was going to be a visual entity and then I had to look good. I got a broken nose in the punk days. Somebody had busted me in Liverpool and it kind of went over to one side. And when you're young and, you know, you're very self-conscious and you're standing in front of a camera and the photographer's whispering, can we just turn his head to the left because he's got a lump on his nose, you think, well, I'll do something about it. Becoming increasingly self-conscious, Pete forked out £750 to fix his knobbly nose. But when he woke up following surgery, his dream of a new nose had become a nightmare. I woke up covered in, in blood. There was so much blood, it was unbelievable, with, with tubes on my nose. He'd removed most of my nose. There was just two nostrils and a little bit of bone in the middle, and I nearly fainted. In Pete's eyes, his nose looked horrific, and with no time to have it fixed before an impending TV performance, he decided to patch it up in his own way. I thought, what am I going to do? But I had to do Top of the Pops. So I made an eye patch where it sat, hid the side of the nose that was bad. Following his TV performance, Pete underwent surgery to fix his nightmare nose. But this was just the start of his corrective surgery saga. The amount of surgeries that I've had are absolutely minimal compared to the amount of reconstructive surgeries that I've had, and probably be 300. Pete's nose job was just the tip of the iceberg for his titanic transformation. When Dead or Alive failed to produce another hit single by the late 80s, Pete he took himself out of the public eye and onto the operating table. Four times at the nose, two sets of cheap burn implants, that's six, and the two out, that's eight. Lip augmentations, which was like the nightmare of the life, 210. Pete, desperate for a fuller pout, had fillers suitable for use in lips injected, but things went horribly wrong. And they were done by the Lip King of London and he's using this solution in penises and breasts and cheeks. And I did a gig with the Scissor Sisters, and while I was singing, I could feel an internal burning sensation in my lower lip as I was singing, and it was distracting me. Pete's flaming lips were filling with fluid. Extremely concerned, he returned to his surgeon to have them drained. He held me down on the operating table and he got two syringes and punched them in. At least a pint and a half of yellow steaming fluid was vomited out of the lip. His infected lips continued to inflate, forcing him to regularly drain them. 
Worse still, the permanent filler that was originally injected into his lips was migrating all over his face. Then I started to develop holes in my skin, and if I so much as touched my face, there would be an audible hissing. It would go, and out onto the mirror would vomit this yellow fluid. The infection in Pete's face was spreading, and his lips were at risk of amputation. He sued the surgeon who settled out of court for £450,000. He used the money to pay to have the filler removed. A major operation a week for two years to remove from my cheeks, where it had migrated and removed from my Adam's apple. I removed it from the back of my eyes, and they couldn't do anything about the liver or kidneys. I had to excrete that out. After over 200 reconstructive surgeries and all the frightening filler removed, the surgeon could begin reviving Pete's lifeless lips. I had a piece taken out of my stomach to make a lower lip, and then a piece taken out of my stomach to make an upper lip shape. I was clinically depressed. You know, two years is a long time out of your life. But it wasn't about to get any better. Pete's lips may have been salvaged, but the effects of huge amounts of medication used on him was taking its toll. I developed blood clots and pulmonary embolisms in my legs, heart, lungs. They are getting these black marks on my skin. I thought they were bruises. And next thing, my driver came in. I was unconscious, not breathing. With his life in the balance, Pete was rushed to hospital. The family were all gathered around thinking I was going to die. Remember, they got the priest in to do the last rites as well. I had less than 2% chance of survival. Moments from death, Pete was put on a course of blood thinners to allow the blood to bypass the clots in his vital organs. After an agonizing 10 days, the doctors had saved him, but the nightmare wasn't over. But with the blood thinners, if I so much as scratched like that, the surface of my skin, I couldn't stop bleeding. And then the blood thinners, I do some research onto them, cause osteoporosis, tooth loss, um, spinal damage and stuff like that. Following his time in hospital, his teeth were beginning to decay. In an attempt to mask the problem, he opted for veneers, but ill-fitting veneers on top of cracked and rotting teeth has left his mouth a disaster zone. I have some broken teeth at the back that are broken. Since day one, I've had problems with them, with veneers receding and shrinking and stuff like that. They've just been a nightmare. With shattered, rotten teeth hiding behind ill-fitting veneers, Pete can add dental work to his surgery shopping list. He now needs a full dental MOT, but there's a problem. I'm so afraid of the dentist he's going to have to sedate me. There's something about rubber gloves and the hands coming near your face and stuff like that. I, I just don't know how I'm going to get through it. After decades enduring painful surgeries to correct the damage caused by botched cosmetic procedures, it's a miracle that he can even contemplate going back under the knife. What I'm trying to achieve my, with my surgery is my own personal satisfaction. It's narcissism and it's extreme. Coming up, another cosmetic procedure leaves Pete red-faced. I'm just having a panic attack. And the dentist leaves him terrified. I'm going to stop this now because it's just getting me in panic. To conform is 80s pop star Pete Burns. But despite two years of reconstructive surgery to save his lips from amputation, Pete's addiction to cosmetic procedures continues. Fresh from an acid peel, a very red-faced Pete is in central London for a consultation with dental surgeon Adam Slade. After life-saving blood thinners caused gum disease and a round of dodgy dental work left him in a rotting mess, Pete is desperate for a new set of dental implants. But first, there's a deep-rooted fear he must overcome. I'm not afraid of anything that I have to go through. Fear is not a word that's in my vocabulary, but after the experience with the last top of his league cosmetic dentist, I'm left traumatised by it. Hello. Hello. Oh, you look lovely and friendly. <laughs> it's all right, no, I promise I'm going to be. I promise oh, I'm, I'm terrified. Be. I'm not, right? I've just had an acid peel on my face, so okay. don't worry, I, I haven't got syphilis. No, Take a seat. I can't tell you how traumatic this is because the last time I was in one of these seats, he made yeah, okay. such a pig's ear of it. Adam begins by examining the damage caused to Pete's teeth from previous surgery and poor dental hygiene, but soon his fear of the dentist surfaces. We know we're going to be OK. I'm just having a panic attack. Okay. Just let me kind of just say something. Yeah, of course you can. I just started to have a ridiculous panic attack because I got a flashback to the last dentist. After a short break, Adam can take scans of Pete's mouth and uncover the extent of his problems. 
Looking at the bottom, we can see we've got a cavity. See that black shadow oh, yeah. there? So that's a hole. This is the one on the top Broken. left, the very back. Mm. This, this is the one we know we can't save. There's not enough tooth left to save. And this is the one in front, which uh, on the x-ray looks slightly worse than it does in the mouth. There's, there's something going on up here. This is maybe filling material or something right in the roots. Do you know what? Out. So look, you know, you can I'm going to stop this now because it's just, it's just getting me in panic. It's all too much for Pete, but Adam has three options to give him back his smile. The main option would be a denture of some description. Next option would be to save the ones that can be saved and then use implants to restore the spaces. And the third solution is to say, OK, fine, we'll take out the remaining six or so teeth that are reasonably healthy and then put a complete set of teeth on implants. With a mouth full of decay and damaged teeth, there's a long surgical road ahead. But will he be able to conquer his inherent fear of the dentist and go through with surgery? And if so, which option will he choose? Pete is on his way to see a surgeon of 10 years, Dr. Ferrando. With constant cosmetic work needed following his botched lip fillers, he's come to find out if any more can be done to fix his lopsided lips. Oh, oh, With the constant filler for the scar tissue, yeah. the lip is becoming heavy yeah, and it's yeah, dropping. Yeah. And also the scar from the previous lip lift has stretched, so yeah. the lip is going lower. So I paint it on a lot higher, and I don't like doing that because I feel like I'm painting yeah. on a moustache. OK, Peter. I have to change. But before Dr. Ferrando can assess the situation, Pete needs to unmask his lips. So I'll remove the makeup around the lip area and then I'll go and replace it because I'm not going home looking like a witch. With the layers of lipstick removed, the full extent of damage caused by hundreds of lip fillers can be seen. This lip is too heavy. Oh, it weighs a ton. I can pull a little bit up the upper lip without touching the upper lip because it's, it's too dangerous. Yes. After examining Pete's heavy top lip, Giovanni has decided the best option is to give Pete an upper lip lift. This would not only reduce its weight, but also give it a much better appearance. It's not just celebrities that are striving for that catwalk-ready look. More and more Brits are going under the knife on their pathway to perfection. Well, we know that the cosmetic industry is growing for a fact. When we look at the figures year on year, not just in the UK, but globally, um, you know, it's a, an industry which is constantly on the increase. Cosmetic transformation is dead or alive's Pete Burns. He's come to see cosmetic dentist Adam Slade. Following his initial consultation, he's chosen to have his ill-fitting veneers replaced with a complete set of implants. But first he needs to tackle his dental demons. I was very nervous in the days preceding this appointment. It's the dentist after all, and anyone who visits the dentist gets dental nerves. It's a big procedure for anybody to go through, but the biggest thing is going to be looking after Pete and, and, and making sure that he doesn't get too anxious during the procedure. OK, so you're going to do a good job? We are, you know we are. I know you are, so but I'm that. absolutely bricking it. I know, I know. And would you keep me up on pain relief? Yeah, of course. Thank you very much. You better Definitely. do a good job or I'll scratch your eyes out. <laughs> OK, perfect. OK. During this surgery, Adam plans to remove all Pete's decayed teeth ready to fit his new implants. After being sedated, Adam injects Pete with a local anaesthetic to numb his mouth. However, Pete's large, heavy lips are causing problems from the outset. Just stretch wide, wide, wide for me, open wide. But there's obviously quite a bit of limitation in the opening. Oh. As you can see, not the world's best access. Just open for me there, Pete. Open wide. Pete, open wide for me. With minimal access granted, Adam comes face to face with the damage. He's got a lot of decay. A little bit of gum disease, not such a big problem on that front. Um, and before we can really save the teeth in the long, long term, we have to control the disease. Before Pete can even consider a future with dental implants, Adam has the difficult task of extracting the black shards of teeth festering in his gums. The decay has made its way right the way through the structure of the teeth, so all that's left is the root, the bit that's just stuck in the bone and in the gum. Well done, Pete, that's one root. Another root. Yeah. Pete, well done. Really well done. Wow. Well, that's that tooth out. Oh. Yeah, that back tooth, the really, really, really bad one is gone. 
Oh, fantastic. Which is very, very, very good news. After five long hours, the decayed fragments of teeth are removed. Adam takes a mould of Pete's mouth, which will be sent to the lab to make his new dental implants. A little bit wider, that's the one. However, the limited access into Pete's mouth and the extent of the decay has left Adam worried that dental implants may now not be an option. Before any further surgery, he'll need to reassess the plan. For now, Pete's dreams of a perfect smile are on hold. After looking at the scans of Pete's mouth, Adam can see that his raging gum disease has been eating away at the bone. Pete's dream of a full set of dental implants is now in doubt, so he's been called back for an emergency consultation. We can head off down the road, we said, and say, look, OK, we take out the teeth, we put some implants into the top, we put teeth on top of the implants. But, and it's, this is a big but coming up, if you run into any problems with those implants... Why should I? Well, bone quality bone density, and just sheer access problems for us, getting the implants where we want them to be, OK? The risk is we end up with no teeth. If we don't get the disease completely under control, you are going to lose My teeth. your teeth. Yeah. It's not the news Pete wanted to hear, but in order to successfully fit dental implants, healthy, solid foundations are vital, something he doesn't have. I'm giving you kind of, if you like, option one, we try to restore you with, on as much as possible with what you've got and try to manage those teeth. We use implants in some of the spaces where we can get them in. Option two is you say, look, OK, thanks very much, which is what you said originally. I don't want to get involved in that. I don't... I, you, don't feel that keeping your teeth is something that you want to do. Then you're going to end up losing all the teeth. But in the event that implants prove to be unsuccessful or impossible to do for some reason, then you have got no teeth. The problem for me, the dilemma is, if, if we were armed with a crystal ball and we knew... We knew what was going to happen, but I'll tell you what's going to happen. It's going to go really swimmingly well, cos I'm really, really fortunate. But some may question how fortunate Peter's been after previous procedures left him knocking on death's door. At the risk of losing all of his top teeth forever, will he compromise his original wish of having them all replaced with implants? Coming up... We get to the root of Pete's dental decay. You can see that what's left is not pretty. And he has a confession to make. Oh, I did a very stupid thing. I put myself totally in your hands and I wish you luck because I need it. The is just days away. He's back to see Dr Ferrando for a pre-op consultation. But it seems the four-week wait for his surgery was just too long. And his addiction to maintaining the body beautiful has led him into more trouble. I visited a fully qualified yeah. beauty therapist and I wanted my tear troughs yeah. and cheeks augmented. My mistake, I didn't ask her what the product was and now it is hardening yeah. and sometimes there's holes appear in the skin and it discharges. Because I don't want the same disaster as I had with the lip filler, I actually want this crap out of me. Permanent filler can be extremely dangerous. Left under the skin, it can become infected at any time and potentially migrate to other parts of the body. Yeah, let me check, Pete. This part is very hard. Mm. And I can feel the product from here. If Dr. Ferrando doesn't remove the unknown permanent filler as soon as possible, the consequences could be dire. The only way to make sure all of the filler is removed is to open up Pete's face and scrape it out. I have to start from here, from the temporal area, the cold skin, and remove the product and pull the skin up. Oh, I did a very stupid thing, not inquiring about the product. It was a very stupid thing, and I feel embarrassed about it. It's a big operation, and there is a bleeding infection. I put myself totally in your hands, and I wish you luck, because I need it. Because of the seriousness of Pete's latest filler faux pas, Dr. Ferrando must put his upper lip lift on hold. He will now need to concentrate fully on getting Pete out of any immediate danger. See you soon. Yeah. Call Bye. me. Yes. Bye. But it sounds to me like Giovanni's going to be removing my whole face and sucking everything right back out. Am I nervous? Yes. But this isn't the first time Dr. Ferrando's been in this situation with Pete. When permanent filler left Pete's lips on the brink of amputation, it took over 200 operations to correct the damage. With a similar product now pumped into his face, will Dr. Ferrando be able to once again save Pete's face from falling apart? 
whereas some celebrities go into the 7% year on year. You see an increasing number of patients year on year who want better, whiter, straighter, prettier teeth, uh, which is driven strongly by the media and the fact that it is impossible to look down a magazine rack without just seeing perfect teeth. Hoping to save his smile from rotten roots and cracked veneers, pop star Pete Burns is back to see cosmetic dentist Adam Slade. But after finding out just how decayed his mouth is at their last appointment, the man used to getting what he wants has had a difficult decision to make. Well, today I'm having restorative work to save my teeth. Initially, I thought I wanted all implants because I like all things artificial, but um, it was too high risk to have the implants because if they fail, you lose your gums as well and you're toothless in the long term. Pete's raging gum disease has left the bones too weak to hold a full set of implants, so Adam will try to salvage what he can inside Pete's mangled mouth. Hey, good morning. Hi, How are good you? Good morning. I'm uh, well. I'm okay. I've been better. I've got a really bad migraine oh, this morning, and bad. I've had insomnia all night at the prospect of all of this. <laughs> Anticipation. Anticipation. Yes. <laughs> a bit like Christmas Eve. It was just I was like... waiting for you to come down the chimney with the new set of lashes. Once Pete is sedated, Adam starts his dental rescue mission by removing the veneers from his bottom teeth and tackling the extensive decay lying beneath. He isolates the first damaged tooth with a rubber dam to prevent the tooth getting wet. And now what we're doing is just literally by hand building up a replacement veneer effectively uh, in a material that's called composite, which is basically a, a filling material effectively. Um, but specifically designed for this purpose. It can stay there if necessary uh, indefinitely. Adam continues to rebuild Pete's damaged teeth one at a time. Just over five hours in, the vast amount of decay has been controlled and Adam can begin removing the remaining rotten stumps. Routinely, this would be pretty straightforward. Um, 10, 15 minutes, maybe maximum. Uh, but of course, we've got, to, we've got the problem as we're going backwards of the limited opening, and now we're going to have to sort of, you know, work a little bit slower. You can see that what's left is not pretty. Um, it's just a, a stump, and it's quite soft. There it is. We got it. The process is repeated on the final two remaining rotten stumps and the surgery is over. Well, it wasn't an easy day at the office, but uh, it went really, really well. The next stages for Pete are really doing everything we can to try to prevent the disease progressing. If the disease has progressed, then the reality is Pete may well eventually lose all of his teeth and we'll have to do the implant treatment. Pete and I are gonna be seeing each other for ever. <laughs> With restorative work complete, Pete now has the task of maintaining his teeth so implants can be fitted in the future. But for now, Pete's delighted with the results. Oh, great. Oh, yeah. Pete's journey to achieve physical perfection continues. Coming up, Pete goes under the knife for a full facial reconstruction and the extent of what he's had injected into his face is revealed. Look, can you see? Brightening. The problem with a lot of fillers are that, you know, rather suspicious substances um, you know, or non-licensed substances are used, and they're administered by people who, who, who aren't even medical professionals. That's a recipe for disaster. After being saved from his dental decay, pop star Pete Burns' facial rescue mission is ongoing. But because an unknown permanent filler has been injected into his cheeks, Dr. Ferrando has put Pete's upper lip lift on hold. Today he has to undertake a full facial reconstruction. The stakes are high. Not removing all of the filler could lead to serious complications. He has to remove the face, scrape out the filler, then sew the face back so everything will be tighter because the fill will have been removed and the face is stretched. And I know there are high risks involved with general anaesthesia, but um, only the good day young. I ain't dying anytime soon. Once he is under the general anaesthetic, the surgery begins. For Dr. Ferrando to be able to suck the product out of the cheeks, skin from the temple down to behind the ear is removed, 
making sure any bleeding is controlled along the way. I'm going to look for the, the, the product he has in the face. There are a lot of scars, of course, inside. I can feel the problem under my fingers. But the product isn't only in Pete's cheeks, it's under his eyes. I'd like to try to remove also from this part. Oh, so hard. It's quite impossible to go through. Previous procedures and filler injections have left large amounts of scar tissue under the skin. Because around the filler, the body built like a capsula. For this reason, sometimes it's very difficult because there is a scar tissue all around the product. Oh, yes, there you go. With all of the filler from the right side of the face removed, Giovanni will now need to perform a facelift to tighten the skin, which has been left stretched and saggy. Now I have to call more the skin. And... He starts by separating the skin from the muscle. I moved the skin up and the muscle too, and I started to suture and I'm going to remove the skin. After two hours on the operating table, Giovanni is just halfway through. He now has to repeat the whole process on the other side of Pete's face. But as he begins to suck and scrape the filler from the left side, it becomes evident that the product has migrated into his jaw. One ball of product, look. Can you see? I don't know what kind of problem. Confident that all of the product has finally been removed, the facelift is completed on the left side. After four and a half hours, Pete is free from the frightening filler. He will now be taken to recovery. Just one week later, Pete is already delighted with the results. I've got staples, nuts, belts, stitches, I've got the whole lot, I'm, I'm Frankenstein. I'm feeling absolutely wonderful. I mean, I, I've got <laughs> complete flexibility. I don't feel tighter at all. Um, the only thing I feel is, because I've got pads over my ears, is death, which can be a blessing in disguise, really. Pete's face has been freed from the lumps of potentially harmful permanent filler, but even with over 300 cosmetic procedures to his name, he still foresees a future under the knife. People might think, you know, I'm the ugliest sort of a bit July, but I'm very pleased with it. I want to maintain this appearance. And I want, the reason I have a makeup tattooed is one of my main worries is that when I'm buried, no one will be able to do my makeup. So at least I know when I go to the grave, I'll look exactly the same. Next time, Star of the Valley's Natalie Harris. I just don't want these things on my chest anymore. The changing face of John Travolta. At first, I thought he was wearing some special prosthetics. Model Tracy Kirby. It started to come up with pus, and all this yellow gunk would come out. It just vile. And the inimitable style of Joan Rivers. A style you cannot either have it or you don't. Mm. It's like herpes, you know? Right, and you can catch all that as new celebrity botched up bodies continues next Thursday at 10 here on Channel 5. More regrets are getting a raise next tonight in new tattoo disasters. What were you inking?